back from off Fear the Walking Dead. This is episode 10 of season 6. Uh, very excited to see what's going to be happening in this next episode, given how the last one played out. Um, Ginny's gone. Bad bitch. Um, June is badass. Dakota also needs to die. Um, and yeah, we kind of are in a bit of a state right now where I'm like, where the hell are they going next? We still have the end of the beginning people out there. Um, so I imagine they're going to play a key part in what's left of this season. Um, but yeah, last episode was quite something. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we continue on from, you know, some pretty crazy stuff. Um, well, from both of them, you know, the last couple of episodes, really. Um, but yeah, again, this season's been incredible so far. Looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us next. So let's get into it. I felt hopeful. I mean, if this is a Daniel episode, I'm absolutely here for it. Dwight the Builder. Some lies are worth the cost. Oh, don't stand my to my soul, Daniel. My wife ate this soup all the time she was pregnant with Ophelia. I don't have much of an appetite today. Both gone now. It felt as if everything I'd done was beginning to pay off. I don't like how they're framing this as like... Look at everything Daniel's done for us. <laughs> Surely they can't kill three big characters three episodes in a row. We share with you, we gotta share with everybody. We're running on fumes. What a terrible prospect. Sharing with everybody. Greetings. Working together. And nice to know that we might even be able to lend each other a hand in these troubled times. Yes, we can. Because we might be facing a threat Pink to can. our existence. Anybody breaks it, anybody. You will not be welcome here again. Mm, be careful, you might get banned from the place you don't ever go to anyway. And then everything changed. Daniel, you need to stop doing that. What? What? Oh! Oh. Decided to change everything. To give my daughter the kind of life I felt she deserved. Pretty short sure life, wasn't it? This... The knife. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to trust you at all. <laughs> <gasps> yes! Ten out of ten episode. You find it. The forgetful act. Oh, it's quite convincing. And it appears the gambit paid off. Why did hearing that mean so much to me? There is a good reason. Oh. I'm scared about the memory thing. Because he was like going through words at the start. Is it baby time? <laughs> Everyone ships it, as they should. Dakota, these people, Virginia ever say anything about them? <sighs> as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason to keep her alive anymore. I don't care what information she has. Asking a question, I'm going to use the test. Oh dear. Holy shit. I say Dakota did it. Let's kill her. Did I believe it was an accident? Fuck no. The walls will hold. Let's hope so. When I saw the guns were missing, I knew the explosion was no accident. Yeah, distraction. Someone did it to trap us inside. Draw their death. Fuck. And leave us defenseless. This place wasn't even safe for him. I needed to find those weapons. Great. I wonder who he's talking to, and why he ends up locked up. So I could do what I needed to do to find out who stole the weapons. I like how this feels a lot like John's episode earlier in the season, like the murder mystery thing. But we know what happened to John a few episodes later, so I'm nervous for Daniel. <laughs> nice. Ah. Who found the guns? You. He might not have just handed in all his weapons. This like, we can't exactly trust Strand, can we? We need those weapons. I don't think it was him. Daniel. I feel like Strand's Daniel. the obvious one. Which means it's not Strand. Before you do that, why don't you tell us something? Where's Grace? Huh? Where's Charlie? They're not a part of this. 
And Sherry's got a point. I mean, where's the pregnant lady the and the young girl in this dangerous situation? My, it makes sense to send them away. Let's calm the fuck down. Maybe Morgan is. And maybe this whole thing is a scam to keep us in here. You don't believe that, do you? I don't know. Sherry's quick to blame literally anyone but herself, isn't she? Sure is that we have to look out for like, about everything. Man, look at me. What the? Oh my god. You will never forget who did all of that. I was gonna say, no wonder he fucking hates you. That's some Skyfall ass shit. Damn, Daniel. You missed a bit, mate. What happened here, Daniel? What you said about your jaw. The pain I caused you. <laughs> Don't. I think he does. What do you want, Daniel? Care. I could help create the kind of home I wanted Los Angeles to be for Ophelia and myself, a place where. Aww. I'm at the shack, but great. Yeah. Fuck. The shack. Daniel, what are you talking about? The shack in the woods. I marked it in the map I gave you. You told her to go to the caverns. You told me the same thing. No. Oh no. Why would I send you to the caverns? We, no. we have send him really up with his memory and stuff. Did he like move the weapons and like doesn't remember? Okay, but also tell them now. <laughs> I know what I said, I know what I did. Oh, I'm just no. asking. Are you sure? Strand was saying earlier, like, how good he was at pretending he his memory was bad. But what if it genuinely like hey, is? It's confusing. It's okay. Maybe mm. you should talk to somebody, huh? Why? Oh, June. Of course. But there doesn't appear to be any underlying physical cause, which is good. It means we can treat this. Okay, good. Yeah, you spend your whole life giving people a reason not to trust you, and then one day you cannot even trust yourself. Oh, God, that is this. awful. That's so sad because he finally feels like he has something to fight for, and then that's caused this to happen to him. And if they've been there, the likelihood is that they know we're here, especially after that explosion. All the more reason to leave. They know about us. They're going to know about Lawton. We better get back to my the store. And we're going to make the same call, Morgan. Shocking. I think I can help. I think you can shut up. That's where she had me and Al snooping around there, where we found the graffiti in Nora's building. Maybe we start there. Al and Alicia must be halfway there. Wes and I can meet up. We're we'll living on a prayer. I can't stay. It's not safe for me. Yeah, he thinks he's a liability to him now. Would Grace in danger? Her baby, you? Oh. So was it him who set off the explosion as well? Was that an accident as well? Or are we just not explaining that? Can't risk that happening now. Oh, God. Oh. Come to lot. I knew he was going to ask him. We can keep you safe. And everyone around you. Oh, that's huge from Strand as well. I'm doing this for Ophelia, so you can live an honest life. Oh. Oh man, that nearly got me. I'm gonna hold you to this. You don't have to hold me to anything. I said what I said. Yeah, but you say a lot of things, Victor, <laughs> and then you go back on them. I'll get better. Aww. Oh, just makes you wonder why they don't focus on Daniel so much more often. Like, what an amazing character. Minnie, I need to praise Daniel for a minute, okay? Okay, another fantastic episode. I really love this one. And it's about goddamn time we focused on Daniel again properly. I feel like it's been so, so long. Um... I feel like, yeah, he's been like quite underused this season, I feel like. As much as I've loved season six, it's been, you know, incredible. Um, not enough Daniel. 
So I'm glad we've got like a proper episode centred on him um, and just to showcase why he's one of the best characters in the show and deserves a bit more screen time, I would say. There's a lot of characters to juggle, granted, um, and I think that's sometimes where the format they normally go for on Fear kind of falters because you just can't focus on everyone all the time um, unless you kind of cut, you know, the cast down a bit. And to be fair, they have done that in the last few episodes, so there you go. Um, but yeah, I loved the idea behind... Um, Daniel's kind of solving or trying to solve his own mystery about you know what happened to the guns and all of that um, this idea that you know a bit of time has passed since June killed Ginny um, and there's like a new status quo in a sense um, but people still can't quite work together in a way and there's still a lot of mistrust um, a lack of trust between all the different kind of communities which I, I quite like the idea of them kind of continuing to negotiate that and they probably will be brought together by like the end is the beginning people because they keep mentioning their graffiti and stuff so they're getting closer and closer so I imagine we'll be seeing a lot more of them fairly soon um, and I think maybe that's going to be the second half of this season is them all coming together to fight that threat and that might bring them together properly at the end you know it feels very similar to you know Alexandria um, and Hilltop and the Kingdom kind of all coming together when Negan kind of came about um, so I like that and I think that'll be an interesting journey to go on um, and just to kind of yeah, pick up on everyone again and see how they're doing since June killed Ginny. Um, and for some reason, Dakota's still alive. I guess she provides some valuable information, but honestly, I could do without that information. I'd just kill her. Like, the main reason I would have kept her alive was, like, so she could just send her away with Ginny. But when Ginny's dead, what's the point? Just get rid of them both. Um, that may sound harsh, but I just can't stand Dakota. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like the idea of you know, misplaced trust and the mystery that kind of ran through the episode. The one thing I don't get is the explosion. Was that just an accident after all? Was that Daniel? Did I miss something where they explained how that actually happened? So like, oh, it's a misdirect so someone could steal the guns, but actually it was Daniel who moved the guns. Um, so that, it, and they were talking even before the whole thing kind of really got started with Daniel about, you know, a potential traitor and, um, that seems to have not been picked up again, but it could still be the case. So did I miss something with that? Did I miss a line when it explained exactly how the explosion happened and like confirmed it was an accident, or is that still a mystery and someone actually did set off? Because that wouldn't then really make sense with the rest of the Daniel reveal, because it felt like that was the big reveal, then everything's kind of came down to the fact that Daniel's memory um, isn't kind of, you know, working with him right now. Um, so maybe I missed something with that. That's the only thing I'm a bit confused on. Maybe I need to rewatch some bits and kind of see if I've missed something because I feel like I might have done. Um, but regardless, I really love the focus on Daniel and the fact that, um, you know, the heartbreaking kind of revelations there about what is kind of going on with him psychologically. Because um, he feels like he can finally settle down somewhere and he's like worried about the future of that place because he wants to, you know, build it up as a tribute to Ophelia um, and kind of build the home he wants for her and that's put him in so much kind of stress and stuff trying to get this right that I mean, he finally feels like he has a home and he can settle somewhere with people um, it may have caused him to kind of damage himself like this it's really awful and sad and I'm glad that it seems to be something they can treat and work on and I think that is an interesting story um, an interesting obstacle for a character to face in this post-apocalyptic world that isn't just, oh, an evil group of people that we need to kill and get rid of, or, oh, God, there's some walkers we need to get rid of. This is a very, you know, unexplored territory, I guess, in what people would probably have to deal with if the apocalypse really happened. You know, it's not like um, just because the world ends, um, people still don't get sick and get, you know, all these diseases and they may suffer, you know, problems with memory and psychological problems and stuff like that. That's still going to be a thing. Um, so I'm glad they don't shy away from that and that was really interesting to get some insight into that um, and what Daniel's kind of going through and the fact that you know they kind of made it a mystery and driving force of the episode and Daniel was the one trying to solve this mystery um, that was really interesting and the foreshadowing of this with him seemingly pretending to um, not remember anyone clearly you know he, to an extent he was pretending about how much he didn't know way back when um, but I don't know if it had maybe started then or that was just some foreshadowing of exactly what was going on here. 
because while when he first did that, you know, he wasn't settled anywhere. He wasn't worried about keeping his place together because he didn't know about it really. Um, so yeah, that was a really kind of heartbreaking thing. I thought Ruben was incredible in this episode. Um, you know, Daniel's such a fascinating character. He always has been since season one. Um, and as much as I sometimes go back and forth on Strand, um, I love him most of the time, but sometimes I'm like, oh, just develop the character, please, for God's sake. Um, I do love um, the relationship between Daniel and Strand. And with this, and that, oh, when he kind of took out the teeth and stuff he had in, revealed, like, what exactly like, physically did happen to him when Strand shot him. Um, the fact that that gave us some real insight, I think, to why you know, those two may never quite get along the way my Daniel has, after all this time, still held such a grudge against Strand, even though on occasion Strand has kind of proved his worth and usefulness and his honesty. He did in season five a bit with trying to get the plane and everything. Um, but there's still potentially always going to be that resentment there because of what happened with that. And just to see what Daniel's going through psychologically and what he has to physically deal with as well. Like, the fact that they revealed all that torment and all that struggle that he's facing in the same episode, you know, it's really heartbreaking kind of revelation. And it's like one of those things where you don't know what everyone's fighting in their personal life. You don't know what people are fighting and going through. Um, so that was an awful tragic insight and Strand's face as well when he kind of realised exactly like, the long-term damage he did to Strand there. Um, the fact that Daniel's never been open with exactly what he's been going through with that for so long. He's like, well, he's pissed off because he got shot in the face, of course. And you're like, oh, well, it's Daniel, he just walked it off. But he didn't, you know. Um, he is kind of very much a broken man, as most people are in the apocalypse. Um, so that was interesting. And the fact that Strand invited him to come to Lawton at the end and they kind of like, look after him. Um, the fact that Strand double-checked with Daniel as well, like, did you mean what you said about your jaw and like the pain and everything he has to constantly live with? I think that was showing. Strand really does, maybe not to the extent he cares about some other people, but I think there is some level of care, or at least concern at the very least for Daniel there, which I really like. A bit of humanity into Strand's character, um, considering, you know, a few episodes back, you know, like, stand that guy in the leg and, like, fend to the walkers so they can all, like, get away and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I like that they can still humanise Strand like that. And it's just a very interesting dynamic between those two. I mean, it always has been Strand and Daniel ever since like season two-ish when they were properly interacting. Um, so I love that and um, it would be interesting to see if there is a, a shift in that going forward um, of Strand kind of keeping an eye on Daniel. Daniel probably keeping an eye on Strand in return when they're both in Lawton. Um, if, if that may cause some change or development in that relationship, I'm not sure. Um, but the fact that Daniel's kind of afraid of himself and what he can do, um, hurting the people he's grown to care about now, hurting the legacy he feels like he's building for his daughter. Um, it's just so desperately sad. And I hope they can kind of um, treat it in the way June hopes they can. And I liked the reveal that it was June that he was talking to throughout the entire episode. I thought that was very well done. Makes a lot of sense. Um, the fact that she was like carrying out these tests on him. Um, and wants to also get more informed because it's not like a special subject or thing. She's like, well, I'm going to do some research and then I'll come back and probably help you. And um, that dedication to her, I really love. Because um, it, it still gives her like a purpose in life and everything. That's still what she's good at. You know, even before she met John, you know, she was always good at that. Um, even though things may not be quite right with her and Morgan, obviously, because there's a bit of tension when she killed Ginny and everything. Um, and she's living apart in her own little space as well. Maybe we'll get an episode all about just her living where she is now and catching up with her like that. That'd be really fun and interesting to see if that's going to be the case. Um, there's still like, what, six episodes left of the season? There's a lot they can do still. Um, but yeah, just kind of getting a glimpse of where everyone is now after a bit of time has passed since um, Ginny died. Obviously not too much because Grace doesn't give him birth yet, um, but she's getting down close. That, she must be popping anytime soon. Um, and how they did reveal with her, like the the proper like Daniel reveal the fact that he thought he told them something different when he was telling the story back um, even though that wasn't actually the case and he thought some of them nicked the weapons but he'd actually moved them himself um, 
just shows like sometimes your greatest enemy is yourself that often is the case I think in the Walking Dead universe with some characters um, and in a way the enemy was the potential for peace and the potential for happiness that Daniel faced is what, maybe what caused you know some of his health worries right now which is just so awful and sad and ugh nothing is ever good in the apocalypse um, but I really enjoyed that and the Morgan and Grace interaction I love because I love those two um, and just seeing everyone you know not quite trust each other but I feel like we need to get to a place where they'll all work together um, I can understand to an extent some of the hostility um, and why they want to be in different places and stuff um, I'm still not entirely sold on like Strand being on his own in the Lawton like it feels weird but I guess he just likes you know, the fact that he's got his own personal army, he likes the power, he's not going to give that up just to live with Morgan and everyone, is he? So, I guess it makes sense. It just, I guess it just doesn't sit right with me, because I just, I just want everyone to be together. <laughs> I'm like, please, it's been so long. You know, Fear the Walking Dead, I think, more, even more so than Walking Dead, just loves having all its characters be apart and never all together. And I'm just, like, desperate at this point for them to just commit to it and do something and actually build the community. And, but I'm hoping by the end of the season we will have that. Um... So yeah, everything that was great, and all the other characters got some nice moments. Um, Sherry's are kind of annoying me a bit, um, which makes me sad, because I love the reunion between her and Dwight, but ever since then it's just gone downhill, hasn't it? And I guess she has her own shit to deal with, but she does seem to be so quick to just blame everyone else and pick a fight whenever she can. And I, I just don't know if she's even wants to put in the energy with Dwight, the fact that, you know, the energy that Dwight puts into it. I just feel like she's not even meeting him halfway which makes me nervous about the future of that relationship potentially um yeah so i'm not quite enjoying her attitude to that you know it's the fact that i feel like she's not that interested potentially in even salvaging a relationship with dwight but she's also not just saying look this is not going to happen like she's still kind of it feels like she's leading him on a bit but i also feel like it's unfair to say you're leading him on because she's dealing with her own shit and maybe you know she does want something to happen again with those two and she does want to work on that relationship but I'm just not getting that I don't know if it's just the writing or the performance I don't know it's messy I guess it's a bit muddled but I'm sure we'll get more clarification as um, time goes on but I like seeing the community get more and more built up um, I mean they need to rebuild a lot of it again now because part of it became a crater and all the gates are shit now um, but there's time for that. Interesting that they talk about how wonderful this place was. The very next episode. <laughs> um, the defences all break and it all goes wrong. And, but, I mean, there's always going to need to be some sort of conflict and, you know, a sense of no one's actually safe in the show, otherwise there's going to be no tension, is there? Um, but, yeah, I really, really love this episode and the focus on Daniel was particularly uh, wonderful. Um, really sad, but could be quite the story going forward for him. I hope to see a lot more of it. Um, you know, the scene with him and Charlie at the end as well was very wholesome. Um, we saw Skid Mark, so again, 10 out of 10. Um, the Daniel Strand relationship has some very interesting developments. Probably, you know, they like relying on the, oh, they don't trust each other. And Daniel's like, oh, you'll never change Strand. You know, they've kind of, they've milked that for all it's bloody worth for seasons and seasons. Um, so the fact that there may be hints of that actually changing with the reveals and stuff in this one, um, I'm kind of here for it. So I look forward to seeing if there's going to be a change there. Um, and yeah, just to get a sense of what the new life is like now for all these people um, in like the month or two since Ginny died, um, I'm looking forward to kind of exploring a bit more of that side and seeing what everyone else is up to in all the separate communities and how they're going to come together to fight graffiti people. The most terrifying threat yet, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, bloody good episode yet again. Season 6 is just mwah, loving it. And I look forward to seeing what else they have in store for us. Um, as long as Dakota dies at some point, I don't really mind. But until then, um, what an uh, incredible episode. Great focus on Daniel. Hopefully um, they'll do more characters that haven't had much focus yet this season. Um, justice in the way they did with Daniel in this one. Um, as sad as it was, at least he got some bloody screen time, you know? Luciana, you, you know, give her an episode maybe? For the first time in what? <laughs> Five seasons? Six seasons? Um... When was she first in it? Season 2, maybe? I can't quite remember. Um, I'm not even sure the writers remember a lot about Luciana, let's be honest. 
So yes, hopefully we'll get some really great character episodes like that for the rest of this season and beyond. Not World Beyond, obviously, different show. But yeah, fantastic episode, really adored it. Looking forward to seeing what they're going to be doing um, with the next six. I believe there's still 16 in this season, even with COVID. So very happy with that because this season is incredible. And so is this episode, but I'm excited to see what else they have in store for us. And until the next reaction, thanks for watching.